Today we'll recreate this staggered stone block wall, recreating the style of this beautiful restoration. We'll remodel it step by step, starting with this basic cube. First off, we'll select and change our wall material, selecting the external face, typing in stone, and we'll go stone two. And for the top edge, we'll go stone, we'll go sandstone one. From here, we'll go to our floor plan and then open up the elevation marker facing towards that wall. From here, we'll change the settings to match up with these. And from that, we'll go OK. From here, we'll go to our polyline tool and we'll want to zoom into our bottom right hand corner. And from here, we'll start tracing the block work from the bottom left all the way up to the top right hand side, following the cracks just in between the actual block work itself. This way, we're going to create a stagger that's going to follow the actual texture of the block work. And once we get to the top, we'll zoom back on out. I'll link it back to this corner just here and we'll connect our line back up to the bottom. We'll extend this edge out just a little bit further, say about 500 mil and go OK. Using the fill tool, we'll hold the space bar to activate the magic wand and we'll press once. We'll then select our fill. We'll go ahead and copy it. Now up the top, we'll go to options, element attributes, and then we'll go to profile manager. We'll press the plus button. We'll create a new profile and call this brick stagger and we'll go OK. We'll delete what's already in here. Then we'll go ahead and paste in our fill. Now there's a little point just here. We'll want to line up the bottom of our fill with this point just here and the top left hand corner just here with that dot just there. That's going to be the origin point for our custom profile that we're creating. We'll select this to beam and post and we'll go save. From here, we'll select the beam tool. We'll go to the structure and make sure it's custom profile. Going to our profile and selecting brick stagger and going enter. We'll select once and up to the top. We'll go say one meter. We'll bring this edge in line with the wall and then bring it out 500, which was the distance we gave it before. And it lines up perfectly with what we drew. Back in our floor plan, we'll go Control M to mirror. We'll click in this bottom right hand corner. We'll tap Control to create a duplicate. We'll rotate it up until it gets vertical and click once again. From here, we'll select both of the columns and we'll go intersect. When we go into our 3D, we've now got the stagger on both sides. So if we select our elements, right click and go connection, solid element operation. We'll put these as our operator. We'll select our walls as our target, subtraction as our operation and go execute. So now when we select both these elements, we'll turn this to HID hidden and go enter. And now we've got our stagger on both walls. The cool thing is once we've got this set up, if we go back to our elevation and we want to change the shape of the actual stagger itself, by using the polyline tool, we can select over the brickwork again until we get the rough pattern that we like. We'll select our fill. If I cut off the polylines at the top and at the bottom, here and here, and then I select the fill, selecting the bottom edge of the fill until we get add to polygon, and holding in spacebar, if I now hover the magic wand just over the line we created and click once, it's going to add that selection to the fill. We'll delete our old line, we'll select our fill, we'll go copy, we'll go to options, we'll go back to a profile manager and we'll edit our brick stagger, pasting in the fill that we just copied. We'll go paste, we'll line up the new fill with the old fill just here. We'll select the old one and we'll delete it. Then simply just by hitting save on the custom profile, if we now go back to our 3D view, we'll notice that it's updated the cut of the stone itself, which is all still following the texture line that we created. From here, we'll go to our 2D. We'll select the curtain wall tool, making sure that it's set to path. We'll click our bottom left, going all the way around up to the top right hand corner, and we'll go back into our 3D. Hey, there we go. And with that, we've got our glazing. To add in our glazing bars, from here, we can just go to edit. And from here, we'll go to the frame tool and we'll draw in some panels. From here, if we go to document, photo render settings, we'll go to indoor daylight medium, putting this one up to high, changing our size to 3000 pixels. Now to get the best quality, you'll want to zoom in on your 3D, putting on a render safe frame, allows you to line this up so you can see exactly what's showing in the frame and getting it in zoomed in as much as possible. This will get us the most detail on our render. This tutorial was inspired by Balkan Architect. I'll put a link to his profile in the description.